Hello everybody. It is Falcon Alley and Falcon Alley football. We are officially back. No good reason for the hiatus, but we have been on a little bit of hiatus. However, I have been, of course, keeping up with the Falcons and everything that is going on with the news. So you're going to want to check out first my new Instagram page. So you can search on Instagram by Falcon Alley or Falcon Alley Football, and it will come up. It'll be a picture of me and Freddie from draft night. I have on a red shirt that's blazing red hair. Um, but if you follow my old page, you still follow it. I just changed the name of it because it was Falcon stuff. It was personal. It was my adorable kittens. So trying to clean that up and have that as just personal and our Falcon Alley or Falcon Alley football page as just our Falcon news. So give me a follow on Instagram on there. My Twitter is the same. It's Falcon Alley. And it could be, it's mostly Falcon News or talking to the radio guys or that could be anything. But obviously for pictures and posts and information, you want to follow on the Instagram as Falcon Alley or Falcon Alley Football. So you will notice I'm wearing my Super Bowl shirt, which notice I'm not wearing it out of the house because it's still a little rough, a little raw still. But um, I am wearing it because the last time when we went to the Super Bowl, just a couple of years ago, the Hall of Fame game was actually canceled because of um, some, the turf, turf war or whatever, um, turf gate, I was trying to get the word gate, anyway, because of turf gate, and they didn't play the game, so the first actual preseason game that year was the Atlanta Falcons, so that year I said, hey, wouldn't it be cool, Atlanta's playing the first game if we played the last game, now what I meant was, obviously the Super Bowl game, but what I meant was, to win that game. So I'm gonna be a little more clear to the football gods right now instead of everybody. This year we will officially, in the Hall of Fame game, be playing the first official any kind of game. Obviously it's preseason, but the first game of the season. So let's win that one. Let's play through the season. Let's wrap it with playing the last game of the season and with a win in that game. So Super Bowl, um, let's get more of these shirts going. And let's hopefully, like I said, play and win the first and the last game of the season this year. Hashtag Mission Miami. I've actually heard two different ones is Mission Miami and 2019 Destination Miami. So we'll figure out which of those two we like the best. Um, so back to my Instagram. We also have a falconalleyfootball.com website, which has... Um, articles on there is very outdated but has some good articles from last year um, previous several years since I started and it also will show the link to Twitter Instagram and Facebook I have a Facebook page where I put t tons of pictures because like a game after I cover a game I'll obviously have a couple of pictures um, from that game but I also have a horde of pictures that um, action shots videos and stuff that I will put on our Facebook page so Check there, check Instagram. Um, as you know, Instagram holds 10 pictures at a plop. And, and with Facebook, I can actually make an album. It's like, here's this game, here's this event. So you got to check out everywhere. But like I said, on our falconalleyfootball.com page, you will see the links to all of those. So check that out. Um, I know everybody's kind of more on to a lot of Instagram now. So definitely check that out. So far with my new page, I have um, a few of the older pics up of like a lot of stuff that I had when I was, um, that I still had on my phone and just cleaned off my phone. So lost, you know, I'm not lost, but don't have a lot of pictures on there, but I'm going to try to get some of the older pictures on there. Um, but I do have pictures from this year's draft party that was in the Ben's nest, as well as some pictures of the locker room and some behind the scenes, um, pictures from the PSL, um, season ticket holder party that was at the bins just a few weeks ago so definitely check those out again that's on the instagram on falcon alley or falcon alley football so i got to meet a lot of great falcons legends like john riggs and jarius norwood and some of the new guys that are new to the team like jamon brown and tyler davis davison who were super nice um very happy to be in atlanta and some of our young guns, like Deidrean and The Judge. I was so excited. They had just changed out people while I was in line. And I saw Deidrean and Ito there. And I got very excited. Like, oh, we're getting some good pictures. Um, 
And also between, like I said, the draft party and this PSL special event, we I got to break up a bulldog argument between Reggie Kelly and DJ Shockley. Uh, I had a picture with Crazy KZ, again, another big dog to get picture with, get to meet. Um, got to have pictures with Duke Riley, Justin Hardy, and Austin Hooper. Had a big legend sandwich with Terrence Mathis. If you guys are old school, you know Terrence Mathis, Algie Crumpler, and Alan Ross. I'm so super cool. Had Antone Harris, Antoine Harris asked me if I was at everything. I guess he remembered my red hair from the draft party. And um, had my Dirty Bird dance officially approved by Michael Haynes and Keenan Forney. So they played with Jamal, so they said mine was pretty legit because I was around then. Like, I was living the dream back then. And also had a great uh, conversation with Antone Smith. If you guys don't remember him, he was our um, one of our running backs several years ago and got injured and ended up, um, we moved on from him because of his injury. But he was going to be a stud if he hadn't been hurting out. So, um, had, like I said, a nice conversation with him. So, on to Falcon news. Work Dunn has presented keys to his 170th house yesterday. It was to a family down in Tallahassee, so kudos to Warwick, always giving back. Um, our one-time sort of falcon, Brian Banks, who, um, if you remember his story, wrongly accused and jailed, and has been exonerated, and is such a motivational speaker. Um, I get more annoyed, apparently, at the whole situation than he does, but I'm a big supporter of his. He is such a great guy. Him and his wife just welcomed a new little baby. Um, super cute. But he is recording, currently he's recording his audiobook for What Set Me Free. And note that book is, will be in stores in July 2nd and the movie is August, is out in early August, I don't have the date, is out in early August, played by, um, he will be played by Aldous Hodge, who is a super great actor as well. Um, and you can pre-order that book, I know on Amazon, probably some other places, I've already got my pre-order on Amazon, so I can get it as soon as it comes out. Um, and former Falcon Rocky Alford is having his second annual youth camp, and that's set for June 22nd at Southeastern Louisiana University. That was a mouthful, clearly. Um, and that's what these newscasts are going to kind of, these broadcasts are kind of going to be like. Uh, what's going on, obviously, in the off season? it's going to be stuff about OTAs, about minicamp, about different practices, and about what everybody's doing in the community, and just other stuff. So you don't have to follow all the Falcons on Instagram and Twitter and find out what's going on. I'm going to have all that for you. Right now, I don't have a ton, um, but we'll be having stuff coming for you soon. Um, obviously, obviously, in the past several weeks, um, the Falcons signed Jake Matthews to a five-year, $75 million deal. Meanwhile, poor Andy Livitri is just riddled with injuries, and he has announced his retirement um, due to those injuries. We had um, released him, moved on from him, but we do wish him all the best because, like I said, he has just had so many injuries that has kind of moved on from football drama. Um, meanwhile, assistant general manager Scott Pioli, who's been with the team for five years, he resigned from the Falcons, so we wonder if he's setting up to go to another team to lead them as the lead general manager or if he just wants a change of life direction. I feel you. These Falcons are rough to work with. I can't imagine being in the office with it all day. Um, and note that all the all seven rookies that um, have signed their deals, including both first rounders, so everybody is set and officially Falcons. And the rookies, you know, had their mini camp, and um, which includes the drafted rookies as well as all the free agents that were signed. So all those guys have already had their mini camp, got to know the coaches and staff, and learn about the branch, pick out their numbers and everything. Now they're going to be combined with the veterans at OTAs this week over the next three weeks. There's a couple of days, two or three days a week that everybody can practice. No contact, seven on seven, seven on nine, which seems unfair, and 11 on 11. But again, no contact, but lots of good stuff going on out there and just seeing what everybody's doing. But now everybody is officially, well, not officially together, together because these are voluntary. So there's a couple of guys that haven't um, been there, but everybody's, you know, in the shape and working out and everything. So. Um, like I said, so you have rookie camp. Now we've been moved into the voluntary OTAs. So everybody's really getting them all together. Because we have, like I said, Jamon Brown, others. There's a lot of guys we picked up in free agency this year, which is really more action than we normally have in free agency. A lot of new guys there. Obviously, the rookies that were drafted, rookies that are free agents that were brought in. And you never know, Ricardo Allen, which one of those is going to be picked up. Brian Hill. Uh, um, not Brian Hill. Um, 
Oh, God, Brian Poole. Sorry, he just lost his name. Obviously, we moved on from Brian Poole, but he was, again, he was an unrestricted free agent and ended up making the team, contributing hugely in the Super Bowl, and has been here for several years. Um, anyway, on to the guys that we do have on our team. Um, Kiki, Rico, and Free are all back. To me, not having seen him personally live and interviewed him or anything, Free looks like he's 100 already. Um, but all three, Kiki, Rico, and Free, are all back on the field. They're looking good. There are different stages of working out, but everybody is progressing really well in all the physical therapy. They're all on their feet. They're all running. They're doing some drills to, like I said, different levels. And DQ hopes to have everybody back to 100 by training camp, which, again, is a little bit earlier this year because of the participation in that Hall of Fame game. We do not have those dates yet, but I will share those with you when I know them. And um, also, I'm going to have some good... Um, updates and information and coverage of training camp. I'll be there live a couple of days and then obviously other information that we gather, but I will be there live for several days. So that will be really cool to have some good um, information for everybody there. So Sanu is in, of course, in mid-season form. He works out all the time with all kinds of stuff. He's been running on the beach. He's running up hills, like a lot of the guys, but he was seen catching a long ball from Matt Ryan over Isaiah Oliver. So no shade on Oliver, but because Sanu is awesome. But just laying it right in, taking it right out of his hands like Sanu does. Um, Free, like I said, he is running fast and he's looking really good. And you know he's going to run extra angry this year after being out most of last year. And Claybo, welcome home. He looks very comfortable at home. Really pushing those tackling sleds back, hitting those things hard. So, um, glad to have him back and excited to see what he's going to do again this season. Um, we also had some number shakeups um, with some guys that left, some guys traded their numbers. Um, Isaiah Oliver has moved from 20 to 26 with Tevin Coleman, the release of Tevin Coleman, who is now coming or who's been. He's out in um, San Francisco with Kyle Shanahan, our arch nemesis who also picked up Levine Tololo, Ben Garland. He All he's doing is waiting for us to release people that he had on his team when he was here. So, oh, I was like, I cannot pull for San Francisco or, or Kyle Shanahan, but I love some of those guys that he's, get, he's picking up. So, um, anyway, Brian Hill is moving from 32 to 23 with Rocky leaving. Um, Christian Blake from 16 to 13. And Tavise Calhoun from 28 to 39. Some of those Brandy Sham numbers, I don't know. They probably like them. Now, our drafted rookies also have their selected numbers. Um, a lot of the guys that were undrafted, they also obviously have numbers, but there's so many people right now that they're kind of not really calculated yet. Um, but the drafted rookies, I have a problem with several of these, just so you know. Um, if you've watched me for a long time, you know who I love the most. Um, but Chris Lindstrom has taken 63, which is like a little stab in the heart because Ben Garland was my man. Um, Caleb McGarry is 76. Kendall Sheffield is 20. John Kaminsky is 50. I don't even remember the last time we had a 50, to be honest with you. It's kind of funny. Um, Quadre Ol Olson, who everybody says, I heard his name one day 500 times, and I'm like, why are you saying my name, Allison? Because it sounded so close to it. So, But Quadre is 32, so big shoes to fill, because I think of 32, I think of Jamal Anderson. So if you can jam, then come on. Jordan Miller, also big shoes to fill, number-wise, different position. Um, Jordan Miller's taken 28. Again, my first thought is Warwick done. And Marcus Green at 43. So we will see what all these guys manage to do. And good luck to everybody. And I uh, hope it's a great season for all these guys, obviously. I think this is leading to a lot of position competition battles. Maybe not the first, but I think I think we've got our starting O-line. I think those two, two, these two guys are displacing somebody, moving somebody to the side. Um, but running backs, obviously, is looking for that second spot. Um, obviously, having not seen these guys in the NFL, Ito, especially that's why I, like, I would love getting to meet Ito, is Ito Smith is, was super impressive last year um, behind Tevin because Free was out. So Tevin moves up to one. Ito was kind of number two. So he was super impressive last year. Um, Brian Hill's done a lot of returns and you know, played some at running back and was on and off the team and back on. So just we'll see what goes on. Really running back, I feel like, back second and back running back returner um a couple of things probably on defense maybe corner linebacker obviously linebackers are set like there's some I don't know that there's a ton of competition looking this year Dan Quinn's always gonna say there's competition for every position there's not uh, but it'll be interesting to see who fills some of these spots um 
like I said, how free runs, if we're going to have a fullback, if we're going to have these running backs come in as fullbacks, so have two running backs, technically running backs on the field. So we will see. Um, that's all for my news report, but just wanted to continue to remind everybody. Um, a couple of features to look for on Instagram and on falconalifootball.com, which, like I said, is going to be updated very, very soon. This weekend, we're going to really kick off some stuff. Um, we're going to have Motivational Mondays with a Power of the Positive Player. That's a box on our thing, and it's also going to be on Instagram. That are quotes from our own Falcons. A lot of these guys have some really good inspiration things that they may have taken from somewhere else, but they've shared, and that are really good inspirational and positive thinking things that lift them up, things that they're trying to spread good good heart into the world. So we're going to have those. We're going to have Trivia Tuesdays, have a little either a trivia question or a little trivia note. Again, both locations. We're going to have Throwback Thursdays, try to come up with some information and a throwback um, story, picture, quote, something that'll be a throwback for you. Um, and our Red Hot News, again, that is on our falconalifootball.com page which obviously is going to be on Instagram as well and an Instagram story, but we'll also hold it there so you can see it if you miss that Instagram story. And there's any significant news, if there's, like, I literally, the only thing I can think of is an injury, and I know that's wrong, but if anything's going on that's just like quick story, it's not a story, it's a quick clip. Um, when we sign Grady Jarrett to a long-term deal, that's going to be one. Whenever Julio's deal is finally worked out, that's one. Like I said, if somebody misses practice for something, those kind of quick hits. Um... Somebody has a baby. We'll put that on there. Um, but all I have to say, falconalleyfootball.com will be back and active in your one-stop shop for your Falcon news. And the gram will have picks and quick hits of news. But the official falconalleyfootball.com site is where we'll have the articles. It'll be recapping the draft, the PSL events, um, the trivia, the quotes, news you can use, and game recaps and stats. And typically, again, last year was kind of off, but typically I have an article that recaps the game and then my thoughts on the game. So it depends on if I'm at the game or if I'm watching it somewhere. They're kind of two different things because I have obviously a lot more time if I'm watching the game to get notes versus I'm at the game, I'm into it, but I know what happened. So sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two articles a week. So get prepared. And like I said, any other news I have going on, um, I will have that on there. So, stay in the fast lane and set your Twitter, Periscope, and Instagram notifications so you don't miss any Atlanta Falcon news by Falcon Alley and FalconAlleyFootball.com. Rise up, everybody.